Welcome back to 17 on set and joining us this morning is Dr. Ravi Patel with CBCC here to talk to us about something that I'm always shocked to hear that other than skin cancer, prostate cancer is something that a lot of men will will face. It's one of the most diagnosed cancers in men, correct? Correct, Alex. And you know, unfortunately, uh, the incidence is quite high. It's one mm -hmm. of the most common cancers which we see. And uh, again, it's a kind of cancer like we've discussed before. Early detection always uh, helps uh, cure it. And also lifestyle changes make a significant difference in this particular cancer also. Let's talk about the early detection because I know that you know with, with most cancers that is, that is key is the early yes. detection. You yes. want to catch the cancer before it becomes aggressive. Um, what, do, what do men need to look out for? You know, any kind, uh, most of the men forget that getting a PSA done, the prostate blood test, is a very good idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, around the age of 50, there's always a controversy going on. Mm -hmm. Should you get it at 50? Should you get it at 45? Should you get it at 55? A, a good practical ways, just get it around the age of 50. And The PSA? The PSA. Okay. But if you have a strong family history of prostate cancer, it's a good idea to get it earlier, sometimes even at 45. Men who are 45 can get prostate cancer. And the other thing to remember also is that if you're African American, you're at a higher risk of getting okay. prostate cancer. So, and you have a family history, it's a good idea to get it earlier. Okay, so that, those are some good, good guidelines of, of you know, per, or, um, being early, detection. early detection. You also said lifestyle changes. What, what exactly does that mean? I'm assuming assuming a lot of this has to do with diet. It does. So interestingly, if you look at it, Japan has the lowest incidence of prostate cancer in the mm. world. Uh, we're four to, we've got four times the higher risk than Japan to get prostate cancer. And a lot of it it's, uh, is believed to be connected to the diet. So again, the same thing which happens in colorectal cancer, high animal fat intake, okay. uh, obesity. Uh, our lifestyle is not like the Japanese. The Japanese eat more fruits, veggies, walk a lot. We don't walk a lot. Mm -hmm. We drive a lot. And we have and that high, you know, the red meats especially red in our meats, diet. Red meats right. really particularly are, uh, uh, you know, colorectal cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, and the whole aspect of obesity. Obesity changes uh, the hormonal milieu in your body. Okay, and if, if someone is diagnosed with cancer, I mean, what, what are the options? The, I mean, we we're, were talking earlier, there are a yes. lot of non-surgical options nowadays, yes. too. Yes, so not all cancers, surprisingly, prostate cancer is one of those cancers where you don't need to always treat it. If you're 80 and you've got prostate cancer, it's okay to watch it. But if you're 45 and you got it, something needs to be done about it. Either surgery or radiation or other measures. And like we were discussing, the cyber knife is a non-surgical mm -hmm. approach to the treatment of prostate cancer. It has absolute precision and uh, uh, importance of radiation therapy in prostate is not to damage the rectal area or uh, the surrounding tissue and uh, the kind of equipment does that. It's very interesting, the, the cyber knife. You know you've talked about it before, it's very interesting. Yeah. Dr. Robbie Patel with CBCC for our cancer update. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank really you, appreciate Alex. it. All right, we're gonna be back after the break.